Hello everybody, this is Danny Avila. Welcome to my studio here in Madrid, Spain. This is where I work on a daily basis, or at least when I'm home, when I'm in, in Madrid. And today I'm gonna show you the production process behind Thinking About You, which is a record that I recently put out. And I'm gonna explain you the whole production process, how the track started. It actually started as something completely different. I'm gonna show you how you know, all the elements and I'm going to try to explain as much as possible. So hopefully you guys can get some uh, tips from it. And yeah, so let's just get straight into it. All right. So this is the main project of thinking about you, which I'm not going to lie. It's actually one of the biggest projects I've ever worked on. Uh, this is like almost 140 tracks. So yeah, it's it's pretty big. Uh, as you guys can see, I group my stuff in in separate groups to make yeah to make everything a little bit more clear in my in my eyes. I have to say I don't do this right away. So when I'm working on a track or an idea, I for me the main goal is to actually get the idea done. So I start playing around with a, you know all a bunch of different stuff, whatever it is, whatever direction I'm working on. So for me the goal is not to have an organized workflow but just to get the idea done but once i have my idea ready and i know where i'm gonna go then i try to organize everything so it looks a bit more clean in my eyes so as you guys can see i have all my drums here then i have my sands then i have all my effects atmospheric kind of sounds which i use uh quite often uh then i have my chops here this track is uh yeah includes a lot of vocal chops which i'm going to explain a little later and then the the main vocal here, which is the thinking about you vocal. This track was originally gonna be a remake of an old song called Yeke Yeke, which I'm gonna play you guys right now. Um, but first, let me play the actual finished thing, and then I'll play you guys what it was originally gonna be. So here we go. <laughs> Okay, so here is the main the main thing as you guys can hear. I have to say before I start explaining everything, this is the the first or like the main session of it. So you can see all the instruments and everything. As it's pretty messy, you have to say. What I do after this, I bounce stems. So I would bounce between 10, 20 stems to have everything a little bit more clear. And then I open a new project in audio and I would start clean everything up and then I have more like a better view of what I'm doing. And there, and, and, and that's where I would do like the, you know, more of final mixing, uh, mastering. If I do the mastering or if I'm not satisfied, then maybe I send it to an engineer who can do a better job than me. But this is, uh, yeah, like the, the original project. So you guys can, can see how everything came together. So the original idea of the track was supposed to be, as I said, a remake of Yek Yek, which is this vocal right here. Which actually fit pretty well. 
I mean, I adjust, I mean, all the chords and everything playing are actually going together with the vocal because it was the original idea. The whole clearing process of samples are usually a little bit, uh, yeah, not my favorite thing in the world. I decided to just try to give it a, a try with, with, with maybe, you know, like a different vocal, different sample, stuff like that. And that's where I found this sample that fit pretty well. Sorry, here we go. So the original sample, if I'm not wrong, where did I find it? Uh, I think it's from, well, it's from Splice, which is my favorite thing in the world. If you don't know Splice, you get on it right away because it's amazing. There's a bunch of stuff here. Kara. Uh, okay. So this is the sample that I actually used. I've been thinking about you. So then, as you guys can see here in the whole group, there's a, a few different layers. And because this, this project is so big, I always bounce stems and then I try to clean it up a little bit. So I don't have all my plugins on all the separate tracks here. Um, but I'm gonna play you guys this whole vocal, vocal track. Okay, so that is the main vocal of the track and actually the title is called Thinking About You. So let's start with the break. The break includes two kind of different sections here which are playing two different chords. Uh, these are the chords of the first part of the break. And then I have three pianos playing here. If all of them are from X24, Logic Sampler, which I'm not gonna lie, I mean Logic has some pretty good sounds in it. I never really actually paid attention to Logic stuff because I was using other plugins and, 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 and sounds from other from other stuff. But I downloaded like all the expansions from the actual uh, from the actual sounds from Logic and it has some pretty good ones. So this piano is from, from Logic. I added some EQ from Logic. There's some extra EQ to make it a little bit the highest stand out. And then I added this filter called the drop. It's just a simple filter, but I use it on most of my individual tracks here as automation. So you would see that I'm cutting the lows and the highs depending on what I want to what I want it to sound. So this is the first piano, this is the second one, playing the same chords. This one has a camel crusher and then some EQ, both together, something like this. And there's this third piano, also from EX24. So you see that if I would play like one of the pianos separate, it sounds pretty empty. And then I play the three of them together, it sounds a little bit fuller. Honestly, like layering is something that there's no really like a rule say, okay, I'm gonna layer three, four, ten pianos. It's something at least what I do, I try to just go with the flow. And depending on what I want to achieve with the sound, I just start searching for sounds and start tweaking certain things to achieve the kind of sound I, I, I want to get, you know? And there's this other piano I just forgot actually. This one is also from Logic. Now, one of my favorite sounds in the break is actually this brass sound that is like very cinematic, very open, like a crazy big reverb and it's creating like this really big atmosphere. Uh, it's this one here. So this one again is from, from Logic. And then I added a crazy big reverb here, like on 86.6% .6 wet. 
and then and pretty long what is it again like yeah like 3.4 seconds and then i add a limiter from fat filter and then just some eq to get rid of the low end uh so yeah i really like this sound because it fits very well with the whole with the whole vibe of the break and it just adds this pretty big cinematic feel to it so simple bass line here I think it's a sine wave what I do most of the time I mean this one's called bass sine walsh remix because it's the same bass line I use for my Selena Gomez remix I try to save most of my presets so that when I'm working on something even though I might not stay with the actual sound but I try to save it because it actually saves me a lot of time to just say okay I just want a bass line whatever then I go to it and then if I want to change the sound I just started looking for other stuff, but like right away, then I'll have something to play around with. So yeah, this is just a simple sine wave. And then this together with the vocals. So this is the second part of the breakdown. This is where I added different chords. The bass line here as well. So as I was saying before, as I mentioned this, this plugin, I always try to like automate low cuts and, and high cuts depending on what I do. So like the bass line here is, is automated and as well as like all the pianos, I try to create a little bit of tension and, and I think that way it creates the transitions a little bit it's smoother, you know, if you do like those little simple details and it creates stuff like that. Um, okay, let's go to the build up. So something that makes build up kind of cool, in my opinion, is this build up sort of feel that I got. I think it's from Dennis Koyu. Normally, I'm not the biggest fan of just using like stuff that it's like that. I always try to like add, you know, snares and kind of make my own. But this one just fit perfectly to it and it just created very nice atmosphere so I have to say this is not the only sound plane on the build-up of course and I added some extra claps here and then, then I have these extra snares playing on the build-up as well Then there's some fills playing here right before the drop. I added some compression from from Logic and then a limiter because it was clipping a little bit. And then this one too is added a little bit of reverb so. So on the build up here, I start introducing the chords that are playing on the main drop. With this brass kind of sound, I think it's from Cashmere and Seven Skies. Let me check. Yeah. This expansion is dope. Like it has some really great sounds in it. It's, it's pretty cool. So. <laughs> So it starts normal and then I started cutting the lows here. So. so on this sound I have, well let me play you the original sound. Sounds kind of shitty. <laughs> Then I have a Camel Crusher, I have some Breaver from Bahala. Then I have some EQ, just getting rid of the low ones and here it was a little bit like kind of crunchy. Then some compression from Fat Filter. And uh, the drop again, but this one is, like I said, it's just for automation. So I'm, I'm automating the, 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 the low end here. And then what else do we have? 
Yeah, again, a bunch of uplifters and stuff like that. Now the vocal is still playing on the build up, uh, just honestly the, the same vocal, uh, it's just a little pitch bend up in the last bar here right before the drop. Then I added like the higher layer right here. <laughs> All right, so that's pretty much with the build-up right here. Now let's get straight into the drop part. So let me explain you guys the main element of the drop, which is the vocal chops. The vocal chop is something that I believe there's like a thousand ways to do it. I'm just gonna explain how I do them, which could technically be the most annoying thing in the world because um, I probably do it the slowest way but it's it's how i do it so basically as you guys can see i import a bunch of different acapellas so this one is from dirty southern axwo then i have this other one really love which i don't even know which track it's from anymore um so what i do i'll import an acapella and i start cutting let's say like the main sort of words or something that kind of gets my attention that i can play with it you know so, oh, lose. so then I would start cutting like sections that I, that get my attention and I actually do this manually. That's, that's why I said that I probably do it this lowest way. So I start cutting little sections that I like. Control. So I'll cut this one. Okay. Cut this one. Okay, it seems to get enough. Maybe this one. No. Uh -huh. So then you've got, you know, a couple of, you know, kind of nice vocal chops already here. Uh -huh. So then after this, what I usually do, I separate it in four different tracks, and then I start playing around with the picture on on every single vocal chop that I'm using here. So let me go back to the vocal chops of the actual track. This is the, so this is how it sounds. So like I said before, I actually treat each vocal chop differently. Of course, in the end, I treat the whole group, but this is more for like a level sort of purpose. So I just make sure that, you know, the side chain is the same, the reverb is the same, the levels are right, compression and all that kind of stuff. But when it comes to the actual tweaking of each sample on the node, or maybe I wanna do a certain automation, stuff like that, that's when I treat every chop differently. So this is what I mean. Um, so this one, it has, you know, the sound shifter, whatever. Then this one, I just wanted to make the highs a little bit more obvious here. So I treat it a bit differently. This one as well. Then this one as well. So you guys can see that I'm treating every chop separately. After I'm done with it, then that's when I start playing around with the whole group. So I'm going to mute the whole group so you guys can hear how shitty it sound like. So, okay, first of all, we have some reverb, some compression from waves, EQ, just to get rid of the low ends, and something was probably like, is annoying me right there. Then we got the Arvox from waves, sidechain, then this plugin from Sound Toys called Alter Boy, which actually it's my, one of my favorite plugins. I'm sure you guys know about this one, but it's actually really cool. When it comes to like vocal chops and just being creative with it, you can do a lot of awesome stuff with this, which I did on this case. So I pitched it 12 semitones up. I, I, I added a bit of distortion and then it creates this 
kind of annoying sort of high pitch thing, but it doesn't sound exactly as the sound shifter from Waves. I think it's a completely different way of pitching it. And also you have the drive here, the saturation, which you can add a little bit of that as well to create this sort of Digi Snake, Skrillex kind of vibe to it. Then I added some gain to bring it up a little, well, quite a lot, <laughs> 9.4 limiter. Then we got this filter again, just for automation. I don't use that for any other purpose, pretty much. I don't EQ stuff with this, I just automate it. And then this reverb that is automated on the whole group right here. So that being said, let me close all the plugin, which I'm in a mess here. The whole thing sounds like this. <laughs> And I actually want to go back to this plugin that I was talking about before. Again, I'm sure a lot of you guys know it, but if I would take it out, and then I use the 12 semitones pitch up right here, and then it just creates this really like the story kind of feel to it. All right, so these are the vocal chops. Now, let's go. Let's go to all the synths playing here. So I've got, let me go from the bottom. So piano. You know, I have sidechain here, some reverb, the drop again. Then I got the glue, the compressor to control the pixel a little bit, and then just some EQ in from. Logic. Actually, this EQ came with the preset here, so I didn't actually do this EQ. Okay, then we've got these strings right here, which are from Seven Skies and Kashmir's expansion, which I use quite a lot. Uh, what do we have on this track? We have some EQ, then we have compression, the glue, then we've got the drop, reverb. Quite a lot of 42%, uh, short decay. Then we've got this uh, plugging from Waves to make it like pretty stereo. And then we've got uh, Kickstart for sidechain. You can't really hear these strings that much. It's mostly like in the back and pretty wide, but if I would take it off, then that you would hear that something's missing. So this together with the piano sounds like this. Now we go to the brass section. This is beside, like after the vocal chops, I would say this is like the main element. There's three brasses playing. We've got the brass high, which is playing the higher octave, but it's sort of like filtered. So we've got Camel Crash, Valhalla, EQ, the drop again, and Kickstart. Like you guys can see, I don't use insanely crazy weird plugins that you might not know i just have most of my you know favorite plugins that i know exactly where to go and how to use them pretty much and to me just that's the job you know of course you know here and there i would use something that it's a little bit more random but most of the time i just you know i'm kind of like able to tweak the stuff in the way i want it to sound without using you know stuff that it's like too crazy or complicated uh, that's just the way i do it so yeah, next up, the brass main, which is this one here, again, from Kashmir, Seven Skies, this dope library. Brass main. This one is actually playing part of the chord, so it's not playing like the same note in, in two different octaves, but it's playing actually the chord without the top note here, so it sounds like this. Like if I would, if I would, mute the higher note here, it would sound a little weak, so. So it sounded much better like this. Oh, fuck that. Okay. And then what do we have on this one? Camel Crusher, Valhalla again, 
EQ, compression, and EQ. Um, okay. Now the brass low, it's playing like this. Three brasses together, sound like this. So, yeah. Next thing, we go to the bass section here. So, I have three basses playing on this one. We have the main sun bass, which is same preset like i said before i use on my marshmallow remix it's simple sine wave that just works generally uh it works good to me i might change it afterwards but with this one i, I stick to it so it's this one so it has some eq just to get rid of everything uh past 133 hertz and then i cut everything below 30 hertz now this is something that i do on most of my sub bases because i heard that you're supposed to do that i don't know if it's technically correct to do that or not i heard that i create some sort of ramble that you don't need so i just got used to doing it uh and i just do it all the time so uh yeah that's this now I have this Waves plugin to make it completely mono because I'm gonna get the stereo image with the other layers. So this one I want it completely in the middle. I'm not saying your bass should always be in the middle, but what I wanna say with this is, if I would only have this sub bass, maybe I would, I would achieve something different, but because I'm gonna create the whole stereo uh, image with the other layers, I want this one specifically in mono. Now I have sidechain and now something that I do uh frequently if i hear like a little click or something that it's kind of annoying me that it can be created by either some kind of like reverb in the bag or like actually maybe the sound itself i would add this lfo tool in the end something you know sometimes there is like some sort of click happening between here or here i just do like a little bit of space here and then it get, it gets rid of that kind of annoying click that you get sometimes and then i put it right in the end now we have this sort of top bass that if i'm not wrong i think this one is a preset uh, i saved from my remix i made either for the tiesto remix or for a remix i made for Nervo that actually never came out, I think. Let me double check. I think it is mid top layer. Is it this one? No, it's not this one. This, what it's doing pretty much, it's giving the sub bass that little kind of attack to it or it's playing in that frequency range that so when you listen to it on like either laptop speakers or phone speakers whatever you don't really hear the sub bass that much but this is playing around this part here so if i would actually mute this layer you would feel that the sub bass gets pretty weak in a way so both of them together sounds like this <laughs> Now the next layer I'm gonna use is this pretty distorted electro kind of bass line that has a really big reverb. It creates that pretty yeah big space in it. This is the third layer, so I'm gonna mute everything so I can play you guys how it sounds in the beginning. Sounds like crap. So EQ, uh, I yeah I push the frequencies around 1200. And then I got rid of the very high end here because it was a bit too crunchy. And then I got rid of the low end. Then sidechain distortion from Logic, more EQ in. Now this EQ is pushing the sound even more around this area because I wanted this bass to stand out a little more on the mix. So I pushed all these frequencies over here so you could hear the difference without and now with. And then I got rid of 
quite a lot of low in here that I didn't want. Now, Limiter and this big reverb on 46%, pretty short DK. <laughs> But then if I would remove if I would remove this, the Valhalla River, it would sound like a completely different bass line. It's creating that really white feel to it. So the three bass together sound like this. Now together with the brass sounds. Violins and the extra piano. And now together with the chops. Now I'm gonna go to the drum section of the drop. First we have the main kick drum here. This is a kick drum I tend to use a lot of my tracks. I like the punch of it. And then depending on how long or short my bass is, then I control the tail of the kick drum with this LFO tool. So if I would have like a, let's say like a smaller, shorter sort of bass line, then I'll make this like much longer. So it kind of like blends together. But yeah, I'm, I'm satisfied with the setting here together with the bass line. So this is the kick drum. Um, then we have some claps. And this clap sounded pretty weak, so I added this EQ from Waves, Overdrive, and more EQ right here. Without anything, it sounds like this. Now, another claps that I named claps on Diablo, it reminded me a little bit of the claps in his production, so I named it like that. He has like a sort of ride on top, which I really like. Also, this one has some processing. Camel crash and then EQ. I got rid of the low end, and then I pushed the high frequencies a little bit. Now, after this, we've got some, let me play the kick drum as well. We got some hats. A little tip I would give is to find samples that already fit to your, to your, uh, to your project, to, your, to, the, to the sound you want to achieve, but in a way also try to make it a little bit unique or not really like unique, but just try to make it fit even better. Uh, sometimes I, I know people that just put a, a sample in there and don't do anything to it, which you can do, of course. I'm not saying you have to tweak absolutely everything, but I personally like to adjust the samples smoothly into the way I want my project to sound. So for instance, if I would remove my plugins from these hi-hats, you know, it would sound very, it would sound very weak. So I pushed the highs here because I thought I needed it. Then you know, there was, there was this super annoying frequency here that I took down. Then sidechain because it had some stuff playing right on the kick drum that I didn't want in there. So I added the sidechain for that with this preset here. And then some reverb to make it a little bit more open in a way, a little bit like more tail. So I thought this one fit much better. Then we had more hi-hats. With more processing, we have the envelope. If I take out the envelope, you see that it has some pretty annoying tail that you could also get rid of by just adding a simple fade out, but sometimes I just tend to use different stuff for that. So in this case, I used an envelope from Logic. Um, and then yeah, this EQ right here, and then another EQ from Waves. So this sounds like this. Sorry, this one. Now I added these hats, which are actually triplets. I'm not the biggest fan of triplets unless it actually fits to it perfectly because triplets can really, yeah, can really mess up your groove or your vibe if it's not done properly. I found this sort of loop that just 
just fit pretty nice to it, so. It's kind of playing in the back, so you can't really like hear that much, but you just create a little bit more groove to it. So that is pretty much the drums. I have some random fills playing here and there. So, you know, just a sort of transitions. Then I have these snares, which I pitched up here. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum, and what else? So yeah, these are pretty much all the drums playing on the drop. Now, of course there is, you know, some extra effects like white noise, there's some crashes in here, nothing too crazy when it comes to effects. And that is pretty much the drop. So all together it sounds like this. <laughs> Now, I don't think it's necessary to explain the second breakdown because honestly, it's the, pretty much the same elements but just in a pretty different arrangement. I'm gonna go ahead with the intro and outro. So there's one element that I really like on the outro that was initially gonna be on the drop but I ended up going for the brass sounds in the end. So I just, I liked it so I put it in the outro. I think it's pretty nice. Is this saxophone right here which is from the inside sounds of logic. Sounds like this. Now without any processing, it sounds like this. It sounds pretty shitty. Uh, so yeah, I added some gain, well, quite a lot, 12 dB, then reverb, uh, quite a lot as well, 40% EQ. I thought this horn was nice, but sounded pretty weak, so I pushed the mids, and then I took out some of the highs. And then I have some compression, because I thought that velocity of these horns, uh, same from, from Logic, was acting a little weird with some of the notes. Actually, if you go below like C2 here, it doesn't play, it doesn't let you play the really low notes. So anyways, I thought that velocity was acting pretty weird. So I had a compressor to control a little bit the peaks. Uh, yeah, tw almost 13 dB on threshold and then I used the makeup to control that a little better. Uh, then I have some delay from Echo Boy, then Sidechain, and then I have this reverb, but this one is for automation. So it sounds like this. And then together with the rest, it would sound like this. Now that's the outro part. And something that I want to mention here as well, I want to go through the intro a bit. There is some pretty nice atmospheric kind of sounds that I built to make the intro a little bit more interesting. I have to give a shout out to Dennis Koi for that because I used like three or four sounds from his library from splice that are really nice. So Dennis, you're amazing for that. Um, the first one is this texture, texture sound uh, that sounds like this. So he creates this really big atmosphere kind of thing. We, I added some side chain to make it bounce a little better and then some reverb. Then on top of that, I have this texture sound that I cut a little bit. 
so I made it shorter because it was this whole thing. So then I made it shorter. It was already kind of like tremolo-ish. So it was like panning right, left a little bit, but I wanted to, I wanted it to be more obvious. So I added another tremolo from Logic here, which is making the sound bounce from left to right. I added this pretty big reverb to it, so it doesn't cut right away. And then I added this camel crusher, which is making the sound like super distorted. So that together with the texture sounds like this. Now there's this other sound. It's like pretty crunchy kind of kind of synth uh, that I use. Again, I added a tremolo because there's like a pretty big tail. I added this reverb here. So after this sounds playing, all this part right here, it's gonna bounce from left to right, which it creates this nice feel to it. Uh, I added this sound shifter just to pitch it in the to pitch it in the right key tuner that I use sometimes when my ear is not working very well and I have to make sure it's on the right key. Valhalla for the pretty long reverb camel crash again. I just muted it. Okay, uh, and yeah, so these three sounds together sound like this. Now there is this extra vocal kind of chop plane uh, here. So I'm gonna mute the plugins. Well, there's sound shifter again, just to pitch it in the right key. Tuner again for the main, for the same reason, to make sure it's in the right key. EQ from uh, from from waves and this flanger effect. This, this one is not like too obvious, but it's creating this sort of like flanger thing, wobbly left, right kind of thing. So all together, and now this other atmospheric kind of bass building up, which I think is pretty dope, which is this one. Uh, again, sound shifter to pitch it in the right key. Then I have EQ, tuner, camel crusher again. Then compressor, because so you guys can see, you know, like the, this part is very low. This one's going up, so I just control the picks a little bit with fat filters, compressor. And that is pretty much it when it comes to the, um, to the atmospheric sounds. I also have other stuff around the track, like for this, for instance, this ad lib plan here. And then I would have some other sounds like this. Come on, come on. Just small stuff, like filling up the whole thing. Um, and on the intro, there's also this kick buildup plane, which is this one. So I added the I added some EQ to, because without this one, this was conflicting with the kick drum too much. So it, it's much better like that. Then kick drum to make sure it bounces perfectly together with the kick drum and then just some reverb that I automated here. Together with the kick drum sounds like this. And then together with atmospheric sounds, sounds like this. And then with the rest of the drums, it would sound like that. And on this spot right here, I already start introducing the vocal chops. So I use the drop filter for that. I filter it around, it's on 700 Hertz right here. And then the gain is also a little lower. Uh, as you guys can see during the whole track, the vocal chops have like 0.10 dB of gain. Automated here is a little bit less than that. So it's not like too obvious. 
and then some reverb right in the end of the intro and before the break. So it's kind of like fading out a little bit smoother. And that is pretty much it. So, but this is what the intro sounds like. <laughs> So that is it guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know if you guys wanna know anything else about this track or if you guys want me to explain any other um, projects, tracks, remixes or stuff like that. I had a good time, thank you for watching, see you guys very soon, bye.